<laughs> okay, yeah. good. So um, if you go go um, faster through the slides, then, um, you know, I have done already this introduction. You know, I said, you know, mm -hmm. really where I stopped is um, data is very important. This is a strategy slide, data, APIs, and cloud. As I mentioned, this is uh, when I dropped off, how, how our strategy is coming all together that we are really driving this journey. Um, end to end, yeah. So it's not like oh, we have th some ingredients, and the ingredients are our API, and that's open banking. No, that's not. You need really the API strategy, how you monetize APIs, how you bring then uh, the data also as a value in uh, through the APIs, and also then how you uh, enable this, as I said, through the ecosystem with partnerships, uh, partnering, and all all of that, because that's the beauty of open banking. So if you go on the next slide. Um, just briefly, I, I think this is um, the, the very um, simple summary from my side when I'm talking about open banking. Yeah? So on the left side is more the traditional. You have at the top the customer. You have like the bank channels like mobile, um, call center, website, uh, branches, physical branches, and the bank itself and the, the bank product. So that's the traditional way. Open banking is on the right side. Yes, so two major things. That's the reason why we need data cloud and the APIs. Is like on one side, we expand the bank bank to beyond our products. So that's where we need partnerships. What we have done in Hong Kong, what we are doing now even in in Singapore, and that's the way how we go forward. And now how we provide this, that banking is be our. Yeah, so that's exactly now the what you, you should take out of definition. We are reinvesting at the bottom and at the top. So yes, access just to name it. As I said, this is where we are investing more and more to make it more friendly, more user uh, oriented, and easy to find. Because look, uh, what we experienced in this one year, just to have a lot of APIs is not enough. Yeah, so it's like business people, especially in banking. They yes, they understand in some sense. Oh, there is an FX API, but when you ask them, oh, now now talk with your clients about FX API, they 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 are lost. They they really get in the situation. Oh, it's the same like if you will give you uh, someone ingredients, salt, pepper, sugar, and then say now cook. So then exactly now what we recognize, yes, I need the ingredients. That's very, very important, what you see on the slide. And we put them, we, we put this as a catalog, categorize them, put this in, in a kind of different fashion, how you can find this depending on your situation. But if you go on the next slide, this is to, to make the message there is what we learned out of that is like the user journeys. Yeah, so it's really about like, um, you you have first of all, um, and this is now the the beauty of these different countries. You know, Standard Charter in more than forty plus countries, and as I said, all of them are going now the open banking journey. Is there's different flavors? Yeah, so there is not one one curry or just one uh, you know uh, salt and pepper. So there is really like now uh, how to explore the APIs from your different regions, from your different uh, uh, perspective. And then when you go on the next slide, this is now giving you exactly now the situation where where now the situation is like how do I understand these APIs? Yes, so it's like can I try it out? Can I experiment with them? Get a bit a bit more context? Yes, so in what kind of context can this API be used? So what you see on the next slide is what we called in this use cases um, is really, I would lift it up like recipes. Yeah, so it's like if you want to really train chefs and you want to get more meals cooked, then give ingredients, but if give also recipes to inspire to to make really um, the sense okay what kind of use cases have we implemented what kind of use cases were successful how we have used these ingredients like the apis with the data and so on where and how so that's all what came all in this year to enable business to really really understand how to embed apis in user journeys, yes, so in the customer journey. So that it's not like, oh, yes, I understand my customer journey, and then I'm talking about business capabilities. It's more like also like now how to map these business capabilities and the journey on APIs. And that's what we have massively uh, drove in the sense that, AP, uh, that, you know, on one side, our clients can be self-service. They can go there. And on the other side, that the business can take it. So now... 
beyond of all the investment what we have done now in the past 12 months uh, to enable business to really go to use these ingredients. And we are not just expanding right now, as I said, 150 external public APIs. It's also like now we, we sometimes we consolidate it. We, we sunset a couple of APIs who would not make sense and so on. So it's more like also how you offer your ingredients more and more effective. Yes, by countries, by different uh, uh, regions, even also by different situations and clients. So beyond of that, and now what also the journey of access was, uh, we, we recognize data, cloud, APIs, this is essential in front of the clients, but we also recognized, um, I speed up two minutes and then we can have a Q&A, um, is like how you enable the enterprise. So it's like now as a bank, you have to think about like um, the, um, the situation about um, a bank is not an engineering shop. A bank is not a tech shop. Yes. Yeah, so, but now as we are going more and more in this digital offerings, we, we also recognize how we engage our developers inside the company, how we are setting up new skill sets, how we are bringing this journey inside the enterprise to enable that. So we created also, and that's now uh, in a future open banking, there's no differentiation between an internal portal and external portal, but we really engaged our more than 17,000 uh, technologists in the bank. Um, and we really enable them what you see there, how is the marketplace, how is the developer profile, how to, to bring what we call gigs. Gigs is more like small small tasks, hackathons, all of that things in the geeks profiles. If you go on the next slide, then really about like uh, how you get benefits, how you really get your, you know, a productivity, uh, how you perform, how you benchmark yourself. It's a kind of gamification as well, but you grow in this new world yes it's not anymore just building a core banking or building an application it's really about how to collaborate on apis how to share them in this fully agile manner in a in a bigger scale if you go on the next slide and that's now where access evolved further it's not just the portal we created a complete access academy where we we are we are we are educating a lot yes a lot we are running daily a lot of physical classes digital classes virtual classes now even with COVID. so um, there's where we whole engaging between exploration and learning and um, you know trying out different things in a new way so it's continuous learning as connected learners if you go on to the next slide so beside of the access academy we also launched then an access labs where we really tried out future of banking go far, far beyond of what we are doing today with APIs is we embedded APIs in, in a car, in a, a fridge, in a vending machine. We created a credit card vending machine. We, you know, we, we made access in a sense like embedding into every context where you could be that you're not going physically anymore to a bank or not think about our app or something like that. Going and financial services is happening embedded in your context. So that was what Labs is doing, exploring more and more, co-located with the Academy. Academy is more learning, Labs is more exploration, but the co-location brings exactly the synergies across of them. And with the platform, you, you expose exactly the ingredients. Go on the next slide, please. So now you, you saw this, um, how, how this is getting together. We, we explain then what is the future of banking, how we can create a, a complete new experience without thinking on banking, but it happens during your day life. Yeah. So like uh, scenarios, what we put, as I said, uh, uh, you know, we, we explored a ring with an IOT uh, so device. So now I'm going to Starbucks and grab a coffee and just grabbing a coffee with a sensor. You, you authenticate yourself. You can do this in addition with facial recognition, but exactly the grab the cup, uh, the cup means now I pay for it because I grabbed it and I authenticate that. So it's more like purpose oriented. I'm not thinking about paying for my, uh, you know, um, um, you know, credit card, tap, swipe, whatever. It's always a friction. We are talking really about like my purpose is drinking coffee. So grab, I still need to grab a cup, but this grab a cup is paid. So, uh, but beyond of that, that's exactly future of banking. We exposed APIs going a kind of vision and so on. So I think that's maybe the last slide. I, I'm not sure if there's any more. 
So then I can, oh yes, and yes, we, we, as you see, a lot of, lot of use cases, scenarios with the labs, with the academy, now multiple locations. So Malaysia, uh, China, India, um, Singapore, where we are really bringing this overall journey of open banking, not just, oh, here's a portal and APIs, really about how we are doing with universities hackathons. Now, how we enable the labs even beyond office partnerships. Yes. Yeah? So, and all of these things is happening now, where the academy is also not just internal enablement, also external enablement. So you see, uh, many, many things are happening to implement OP, um, open banking in, in this kind of flavor. And I think that was the last slides and we can open up for, for, for maybe one or two questions. I'm sorry, we are, we are getting, uh, running out of time. Thanks, thanks very much for, for those insights, Sebastian. Actually, we heard from um, Amadeus yesterday and uh, Amadeus is uh, uh, started with an airline reservation system. They published APIs and the, the point of their presentation is that they, they, um, they emphasize the need for a, uh, you need a, a developer relations team for your API. And I think that's, that's the point of your, your Access Academy um, is to actually help to e evangelize the, the use of, uh, of your APIs, showing developers how to, how to access the, the APIs um, and internally perhaps even um, producing their own that, that can be, then be connected to, to the Access um, platform. So this must be a, um, a different way of, of working from the traditional uh, bank IT shop of um, planning everything down to the to the last detail and, and different project teams working to to their own um, uh, to, to their own uh, agenda. It seems like you're you're looking at uh, how how to get teams to think about sharing uh, um, their their services through APIs. Um, as well as um, um, that, that is from both exposing their services as APIs, but also seeing what a APIs are out there uh, that other teams are developing that they can uh, that they can leverage. Um, there is a, a right, comment. Right, job. Um, yeah. Maybe to to add here one comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think this really uh, uh, John. Uh, so, um, can you hear me? Your sound is breaking up a little bit at the moment, just in the last minute. I think now it's better. Yes, it's better. Okay, good. Yeah. So one thing, and that was exactly the whole journey with HR, and when we are doing because the academy is with me with tech strategy not with HR, and so, but we are very, very close with HR. I think one comment what I want to make as the lessons learned so far when we talk about engineering career paths in a bank and also driving this developer experience and all of that is still, we are not a technology company. Yeah, so, and we will not have same engineering culture as a technology company because we are regulated. And that's now also where we are doing a couple of, you know, exploration learning. We want to achieve, I want to say, like an engineering culture embedded in a regulated context. So that will be a bit like different. So I'm sometimes comparing it with the car manufacturing. So you have like engineers who are doing a lot of cool stuff, but you have also engineers who are doing the power trade. So our train, because it's your life when you're uh, using a car, it's also regulated. So then you're also there in this sense in a very uh, regulated context to do engineering. So we are more in this uh, uh, manner where it's like, yes, safety, security, and, and all of this kind of elements, uh, how the engineering culture should be embedded. Yeah? So it's not fully everything like, uh, you know, like the big techs is more like, I will compare it like in that sense, more in the regulated context to build the engineering culture. We want to have freedom. We want to have really creativity, but with some limitations because yes, you know, you still want to drive a safe car. Um, great, Th thanks very much yeah. for that, Sebastian. So there is one question I'd just like you to touch on. 
Uh, there's a question. Is, is open banking from a bank's perspective more about giving, that is open APIs to the community for, for them to tap data or receiving new business from, from your published APIs? So actually we are doing a lot of new business. A lot of new business. So, um, you know, when you are coming to, uh, and this is especially in the retail business where they see this, oh, open banking is now coming from the uh, regulations as where there are marketplaces, reg, um, you know, and the aggregators, and then it's more like uh, seen as sometimes as a threat. But uh, it's not true. It's exactly now when you give and share, you take a lot. And we, we got there. And I said with all these different countries, yeah, we are seeing mm -hmm. because uh, with this sharing, you are achieving much, much more. It's similar like open source. Yes, you can say, oh, open source is giving away a lot of, lot of IP. But at the end, what what ecosystem was uh, created with the open source? It's unbelievable. Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. uh, the same is happening with open banking. Yeah. So we are still, you know, have our core asset because it's our data, for example. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but how we share the data and how we enable to embed this in different contexts is like, look, what we are sharing. Okay, we are not having any more like our physical branch or we have our SE mobile app. So, but. Are we making money with the SE Mobile Ma app? So it's more like, oh, I can get a loan through WhatsApp. I can get a loan through WeChat. I can use this like that. And that's where, what is the core business of banking? Yeah. So to provide you a loan and that is a self-service and not to, to pay for a channel. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a, that's a great insight. Certainly, uh, when you, you can, that enables you to leverage other people, uh, other people's effort. Uh, yeah, in the, the, um, expanding your your distribution. Well, thanks very much, Sebastian. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry we had some technical problems earlier, but uh, there's some great great insights from from that. Um, and of course, people can uh, can ask more questions in in the chat. We will be publishing uh, a, a recording of, of this presentation uh, towards the end of next week, and that'll be available on demand. Um, yeah. So, thank you very much. Um, to, to the audience, we're going to take a break now until 10.50 a.m. Uh, Singapore time when we return. So that's the two keynotes completed. When we return at 10.50, we'll be opening up. Uh, there will be presentations on this stage, the industry stage. There will also be presentations on the technical stage uh, and, uh, and workshops. So the first workshop, I think, is by IBM on GraphQL. So um, please take a take a moment to to take a break and also visit our sponsor booths um, and we'll see you back here at uh, at 10:50 a.m. Thanks very much. Thanks Sebastian. Thank you John. Thank you. <laughs>